Certainly good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and we're hopeful that everybody is uh, feeling well and all could be in one accord this morning. And uh, it's just good to be back in fellowship with one another and to look at the blessings that the Lord has the Lord's done for us. I mean, it's, it's just it's just wonderful. We want to try to study a little bit this morning in the book of, of John, and we want you to turn to chapter 12 with us a few minutes, and we want to talk about some of the things that uh, in here about the, uh, the glorifying of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's, uh, let's look right at uh, uh, t- verse 12, uh, 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 chapter 12, verse 12. We see prior to this is where that Mary had washed uh, the Lord's feet and how that uh, uh, they were very disappointed or the ones that watched it were uh, some of them were and especially for Judas's care the one that was carrying the bag and uh, we know this morning his problem and uh, it was worldly affairs and, and things of this world so but anyway on in verse 12 it says on the next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was come to Jerusalem took branches and, and palm trees and went forth and to meet him and cried Hosanna Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. The Lord, and so Amen. this morning we see the cry out and the uh, the excitement that was uh, uh, caused by Jesus coming in and riding on the little donkey there, and uh, how that they accepted him and and the, and the the welcome that they gave him, and then Jesus. In verse 14, and Jesus, when he had found the young ass, set their own, as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold, thy king comes sitting on an ass colt, which you can find in, I believe it's in Isaiah. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, Amen. then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto unto him and so this morning as i read this and i read is this about him being glorified this morning we have an opportunity this morning to glorify the lord jesus christ we have an opportunity every day every hour of the day Amen. and we as god's people and jesus is uh, uh one that jesus died for we need to remember these things as even as brother larry spoke uh, this morning uh we need to remember to thank the Lord and more than what we do because uh, he's he's in our life all the time. Amen. I mean, uh, he's just not there for a while, but he said, I'll send you a comforter, and that comforter is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Amen. Spirit uh, connects with God and, and with Jesus, and they they all are in one accord. And so uh, we, we have got something precious this morning, and so many times, we forget and turn our eyes on the world and say, oh, what's happening in the world? What's going on in the world? And we don't realize and think that Jesus has got it all under control, regardless of what we think or what we say. Jesus has got it under control. And we need to, this morning, glorify the Lord with all of all our might, lift up our voices of praise to Him this morning because He is our Savior. God is our Father. God sent Jesus here uh, to this world to uh, die for our sins. And Amen. what a great blessing it is this morning to think upon these things because the, the, the sinner has not got any, any hope. Amen. And, uh, listen, uh, if they could just get one, just one little glimpse of, of what we see every day, uh, there'd be a difference in their life, I'm sure. Amen. But anyway, we see this morning after that in verse 17 the people therefore that was was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and had raised him from the dead and and bear record and so for this cause the people also met him for they for that they heard that he was that he had done this miracle and the Pharisees therefore said among themselves perceive ye how ye prevail nothing behold the whole world is going after him and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship him and I would think this morning that it would be a wonderful miracle this morning if it could be said that the whole world is going after the Lord Jesus Christ but they're not 
Uh, right. but, and these Pharisees were not, and so, but they said the whole world is. Well, they were they were liars there because they weren't going after him. They they hated him. They they said he didn't come from the dead. That he was a false prophet. And all these things. But verse twenty says, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip. Which was a which was a Bethesda, so Galilee and of Galilee, and desired him, saying, "Sirs, we would see Jesus." Mm -hmm. And this morning, uh, I, as I was reading this and studying this uh, this past week, some we would see Jesus. Amen. That should be our number one. That should be the greatest uh, thing that enters our minds when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, we would see Jesus. Because Amen. one of these days, we will see Jesus, and uh, we'll see him as he really is, and we'll, we'll hear him say, come up hither. Amen. Until then, listen, we've got to go by faith, but think about this this morning. If Jesus should come down this day and say, come up hither, what a, what a miracle, what a wonderful thing it would be that we would just leave out of here and go to be with him and we leave this old world behind and not have anything to worry about Amen. in this world. So here again, after he says, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Verse 22, Philip come and tells Andrew and Andrew, uh, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Mm -hmm. And we know this morning what he's talking about here because it was six days prior to the uh, crucifixion. And he says here, Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And that this morning is that Jesus Christ was going to die for the sins of the world. Amen. He was comparing himself with a grain of, of seed. And listen, it's the same thing for us this morning. We die daily and to live for the Lord Jesus Christ and we bear fruit uh, to glorify his name and to mm -hmm. tell others and to show others that we are living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he, he says this, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Now, again, uh, you know, in, in this, we do love our lives to a mm -hmm. certain extent. And uh, so many of the times that we can't get our eyes off of the Lord Jesus Christ and get to worrying about this old life and what it's going to do the next 50 years and how that it's going to survive. But listen to what he says here. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And that's a permanent loss. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And I, this morning, uh, would ask each and one of you to search your souls and hearts this morning. Is it ever a time in your life that you hate your life? Is it a time when you say, Lord, I'm just about ready to leave. I, I'm going to go home. And this is what he's, what he's saying. We need to be in that kind of condition that we're ready for him to come and that we're ready to go and that we're ready to see him and i know you say well i don't but this flesh don't right but listen our spirit should stay in tune enough with the lord jesus christ and god and through the holy spirit that we would be ready at any time to to go to be with him so Amen. here it is if any man serve me let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. And so he goes on in verse 27 to say, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but this for this cause came I this hour. And so, Father, he says, glorify thy name. Amen. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And this morning, we we see this about glorifying it again. And this morning, when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, dying for the sins of the world, in agony and misery, and he was he was being glorified by God mm -hmm. because the devil was out there somewhere watching and clapping his hand and saying, hey, I've defeated him. But listen, 
He didn't understand right then, but he did later on that Jesus Christ defeated him. And so this morning, he says here, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And so the, the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. <laughs> Others said an angel spoke to him. So this morning uh, we, we see by this thunder mm -hmm. that so many people, so many people don't understand when they hear something. Mm -hmm. And they think it's, it's one thing and they think it's another. And you, you try to be a witness to someone and, and, uh, and see how hard they fight against it and they don't hear it. They think you're talking foolishness, just like some of those thought it was thunder. But Jesus was speaking, uh, God was speaking to Jesus and glorifying him there on the cross. And so we, this morning, as, as God's people, need to have the opportunity or need to take the opportunity to, to, to be a voice for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I want, to look, I want you to look at, in verse uh, 1331. Uh, it's right there, close by. 1331. Therefore, in verse uh, John 13, 31, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Now, what he was talking about, and I know you read up there, but Judas Iscariot had come in and had sat down with him, and, and he got up and took the sop. And so this was the, th this was the last thing that Judas Iscariot would do uh, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ because, uh, well, when he was at the garden, but anyway, this is one of the last things that, that he done in the presence of the apostle. <coughs> but anyway, he said here that if, uh, it, uh, let me read it again. Therefore, when Jesus was going out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. And now look up at, uh, uh, at 27. And after the song, in verse 12, 27, or 13, 27. And after the sock entered into him, then said Jesus to him, That thou doest do quickly. No man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. But you know what? I bet you Judas is carrying what it was. I bet he didn't think it was thunder then. I bet you he knew what the world, what it was. So he said, Now no man at the table knew what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them, thought because Jesus had the bag that Jesus had said unto them, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that you should give something to the poor. Then he then, having received the sock, went immediately out, and it was night. And so here we see this happening, and it says, in this Jesus was glorified, and he says, on in this, if, if, in verse 32, if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. So this is this is talking about God glorifying because he was talking, he wasn't talking about Judas Iscariot, but he said, if God be glorified in him, uh, uh, in that, well, I guess he was talking, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, you, you shall seek me, and as I say unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment have I given unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye then love one another. So right after this, we see Peter here, and, and, and Peter Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou cannot follow me now. Now I want you to see this, this morning when he used the word now. Mm -hmm. Jesus, that, that shows you this morning that Jesus Christ knew all things. Amen. He knew that he was going to go and die, but that Peter was not going to go because Peter was going to live a long time after that. But he says, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. And so these things that, that Jesus told Peter was true. And, and Jesus, if, if Peter had realized what he was saying to him in a full manner, listen, 
Jesus, Jesus is saying, Peter, you're going to be with me in heaven, mm -hmm. regardless of what you say or what you do. So Jesus, uh, Jesus answered him in verse 38. Uh, Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot we, can, in verse 37, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Peter meant this thing. I believe Peter really, he, there was nothing deceiving about Peter in this, but Peter had the flesh to deal with. And you know, uh, you think about just a little bit later on when Peter was uh, there with him in the garden, uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't ashamed of him because one of the, the guys come up there and he cut his ear off. Mm -hmm. And so he, Peter took a stand, but here the Lord had to tell him some things that he should remember later on because he said, Jesus answered him, well, if thou lay down thy life for my sake, verily, verily, I say unto thee that the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. This, the, this morning is, is a foreknowledge of what Jesus knew. He knew mm -hmm. what Peter was going to do. And listen, I think that this, this thing right here where that Peter did, and he went out after it was all over with. Uh, I believe it's in um, uh, chapter 18, I believe it is. But anyway, Peter went out after this and wept bitterly. Right. And, and uh, he didn't, it didn't say anything about killing himself like Judas, but he wept bitterly because he knew that he had betrayed the, the innocent one. But in all of this, Peter remembered that thing and he remembered that thing and he remembered that thing and he kept that that stayed with him the rest of his life i do believe because listen the same things happened to us this morning that happened to peter and sometimes we get sidetracked sometimes we 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 forget what we're doing and listen we deny in, in some ways, the Lord Jesus Christ by Amen. not by not practicing <clears throat> prayer when we we can or when we be a, 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 a make a statement before someone and be a witness for some for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, but the thing of it is, we don't get by with it, and the Lord Jesus reminds us reminds us of these things. And why does he remind us of these things? Because he wants us to remember these things, and he wants us to be a a closer walk with him, a better Christian. And so these things that Peter did, I think made him stronger, even though, uh, you know, uh, at that time, uh, and John and John wrote about it, and John says, hey, he denied him three times. But the thing of it is, Peter, Peter got the message. I'll mm -hmm. say it that way. And so here we see again, uh, in verse uh, 13, I believe it is, let's see, 36, 36, it, and, and, I mean, uh, 30, 38. And Jesus answered him, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? So he knew at the garden that he was ready to do this. Mm -hmm. But when he got here, it was a little bit different. And listen, when he got over there to where Jesus was being tried, and the maiden come out and talk to him. Listen, he was, he was, he was, he was, a, he denied him. Uh, and, uh, and so that's what Jesus is talking about here. And, and, and when the, when the cock crows three times. So he says, after this, verily I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me. Here again is the, the sinner or the, the Christian that that has done something that they're sorry of. And and I say this to you, I have been in that condition. Mm -hmm. And listen, I've got to be very careful if I if I don't, I'll get in that condition because right. listen, this old fleshly mind, it starts turning and his tongue starts in gear before my heart can slow it down. But Jesus said to him in chapter one of verse 14, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And so he, I think, was comforting Peter prior to uh, his, his, his departure. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And and Jesus, Jesus was talking to the disciples here. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's a promise, not to the apostles, but to every person that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and has tried to live for him. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. That should this morning, that should this morning quench the fires of hell. Amen. That should comfort the souls of, of all those that are troubled about things in this world and things that are going on and things that's going to happen. Listen, that should be a great comfort to us this morning because he, he knows what's going on. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what he's going to do. And when he says... I'll, I'll, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. He knows he is. He don't know when, but he knows he is because the Father has already told him these things. So he said uh, here in verse 4, And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, and cometh unto the Father, but by me. And so we have to go through Jesus Christ in Amen. order to reach the Father in our prayers. Uh, and, and, and listen, when we pray, we pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, and He goes to the Father. When the Father hears it, he has a, the, the Holy Spirit that sends us his comfort. And sometimes it's a great comfort. Sometimes it's not a great comfort. But listen, you get something from God through the Holy Spirit when you pray. And it may be, well, uh, a little silence. It may be a little quietness. And you may, feel, you may feel something in you that you hadn't felt in a while. Mm -hmm. But listen, you know that you have, your prayer has reached God. And listen... You have been answered through the Holy Spirit. So here again, in verse uh, 7, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from hence ye know him and have, have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. So this is this is uh, some of the things I wanted to read to you. I've got some stuff here I wanted to uh uh, read to you if I can get to it. Uh, okay, in verse in John twenty one, I want to show you something else. Just just as I was I was trying to study this in John twenty one, verse four, I believe it is. Yeah. Well, and, and here it is, uh, verse three. Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. Now here was a condition again with Peter. Peter had got, uh, he knew Jesus had been crucified. He knew that he had been resurrected. But listen, he had ascended. <laughs> Peter said, I go fishing. Now, Jesus is going to come right back to Peter again after the resurrection and tell him something and show him something. But he says here, uh, I go fishing. They said unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Now, first of all, Peter was a big influence on the mm -hmm. other disciples. And listen, by them not catching anything, it was a very rare thing because they were fishermen and that was their livelihood. But listen what he says. And, but when the, uh, I go fishing, they said, and we go too. And, and that night they caught nothing. Verse four, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And then Jesus said unto them, children, have you any meat? And they answered him, no. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now people, that's, that's what he meant, and that's what he means for us this morning. I feel this morning that, that this is a, it's a type of thing. Listen, when he tells you in, in your soul and spirit, you need to do this and you don't need to do that. Listen, you need to follow it. Because here's proof, here's proof of what I'm saying. 
They cast therefore, and now there was not, and they were not able to draw, for it was a, a great multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord. He girded his fishing coat, coat about him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were far from land, were not far from land, but as they were uh, 200 cubits, dragging the net of fishes that they had caught because they obeyed what the Lord Jesus Christ had told them to do. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish lay thereon and bread. Jesus says unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Mm -hmm. Now why do you think, and I got to thinking about this, why would he ask them to bring those fish when he had fish already on the far plus bread? And so Simon goes down there and uh, and he wants, and he counts those fish. Uh, and, and, and why these things are happening is because that Jesus wants them to know, listen, this great amount of fish that you've got, that you've caught, listen, he, he asked them, Peter, love us thou me more than these? Peter, feed my lambs. He's talking about the great multitude of fish that they had uh, caught and the small amount of fish that was on the fire. He said, which one of these choose you? And of course, I don't know why I thought it was for, but, but Peter, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 150 and three. And for all of these there was many yet was not, well yet not, yet was not the net broken. And again this morning, why did he put down the net was not broken? Listen, this morning, God's net is never broke. You can you can catch it. You can catch as many fish as you want to. You can be a witness to as many people as you want to. But listen, it will never it will never break. It will never turn out to be wrong. Or it will never let a few get away. So this morning, uh, Jesus is is telling he's telling them this morning about these fish that's on the fire, and he's inviting them to come and eat his meal. But he said, listen. Uh, in the in the verse 15 you now uh, so when they had dined jesus said unto simon simon son of jonah lovest thou me more than these and uh, i think this morning that it's a good question for us to ask ourselves do we love the world as more than we love the lord right and uh listen it's a temptation and it was to peter too because this amount of fish that Peter had caught more than likely could have sold him for a great amount of money. But the thing of it is, God, Jesus wanted him to make an example of the fish that he caught compared to what was on the fire and also the bread that was on there, I see. And so uh, then he asked him, do you love me more than these? And of course, uh, I know what Peter. I know what Peter finally said. He said, "Yeah, Lord, I love thee. Thou, thou, thou knowest that." He says, "He said, he said, thou unto him, feed my lambs." He said unto him again, second time, "Son of Jonah, lovest thou me?" And he said unto him, "Lord, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee." And he said unto him, "Feed my sheep." And so uh, this is. This is the type, this, this fish on the farm represented the, the fish, the, the one that he would feed. Uh, I, I think it was a, 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 a thing that he was trying to tell Peter uh, about the fishing deal because Peter went right back to fishing and, and uh, he called Peter for something else. And so uh, this morning, uh, hopefully you get a little something out of that and uh, uh, you might read some more uh, of it and uh, uh, can, uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you somewhat. Thank you all so much for listening. Amen.